not really. Well, I did a science talent uh, project, you know, which is done after sort of year 12. Uh, and uh, so I did a small uh, research project. But otherwise, I was a physics student. I was mainly doing physics, mathematics, and chemistry, but majoring in physics. So I certainly didn't know any biochemistry. First of all, that's not true. You know, half my lab used to work on chromatin uh, until 1998 or 9. Uh, but I did start working on the ribosome since I was a postdoc, and that was just something of an accident. I, I'd seen an article written by my postdoctoral advisor and his collaborator, and I went, Peter Moore and Don Engelman, and I went to, uh, I, I wrote to Don Engelman and some and he connected me with Peter Moore, and I eventually ended up uh, working in his lab. And of course, the ribosome is a large, complicated object, and so it, it wasn't something you could solve overnight, and it's still, there are many, many problems involving the ribosome. So in that sense, uh, it's not because I wanted to stick to it or anything, but it's always that there were the next level interesting problems to pursue, if it had been a smaller problem, then you know you would have finished it and then moved on to something else. I think the research environment is quite important. Uh, first of all, and for example, one reason I like the LMB where I work now uh, so much is because it has a very good research environment. And what do, what do I mean by that? It means that you have colleagues who are doing excellent work, uh, you have colleagues who are rigorous and critical, so that when you do your science, they give you very good feedback. They give you critical feedback. They tell you, actually, this is a mistake, or this is not the way I would do it, or this is not interesting. You know, that's another uh, aspect of uh, an environment. A and uh, the other aspect of environment is having good resources, you know, instrumentation, you know, infrastructure, etc., and uh, so I think environment is extremely important. You could say that I was actually recovering from mistakes. You know, my unconventional path. If I had not made any mistakes, my, maybe I would have had a very conventional path. Uh, you know, so uh, I'm not sure. Uh, that I would recommend my path to anyone. But I do think that institutions need to be flexible about people who want to change fields. I mean, that's quite important because, you know, when somebody's 16 or 17, they don't really know what they want to do. And sometimes also, if you know a particular field, you may actually bring a certain kind of expertise to a new field. For example, if you're trained in physics, well, biology uses a lot of physical methods. You know, if you're trained in mathematics, well, uh, bioinformatics now uses a lot of mathematical methods. So I think if your institutions are flexible and allow people to cross fields and provide some mechanism for that, that's actually beneficial, I think. I think there were a couple of eureka moments. One of them was when we got crystals of the small ribosomal subunit that diffracted. And that meant, you know, we had crossed one really absolutely essential barrier uh, that we had to overcome. And the second moment was when uh, you, you mentioned that I used anomalous scattering before in the interview with about G. N. Ramachandran. Uh, we used anomalous scattering and we had to, after an ex key experiment, see if there was signal uh, from these special atoms in the structure that would allow us to calculate the whole structure. And when we saw that we had the signal, that was a big moment. And then a third moment was when you actually could see the structure emerge in three dimensions on a computer graphics after we'd calculated it. And we could recognize features, you know, like double helices of RNA and so on. And that meant, you know, that we were, our strategy was working. And so I think, you know, there were a number of 
very important uh, eureka moments. That was a surprise uh, and it took, but it took a while to sink in. It was not like these scientific eureka moments where you instantly recognize that you've, you've done something. Uh, the Nobel Prize is uh, what I would call a byproduct, you know. It has nothing to do with the science itself. It's some sort of external recognition uh, by the community that they think your work is good.